Do you think that you could still say that Ukraine would be moving in a Western direction? Because it sort of seems like Yanukovych is mostly like a pop. You know what I mean? He's kind of pretty pro-Western as opposed to Yushchenko. I mean, he's pro-Russian, sorry, as opposed to Yushchenko, who was more pro-Western. Um, yeah, I don't think that Yanukovych could be called pro-Russian or Yushchenko pro Pro, uh, Western, yeah. Obviously, Yanukovych is from the east of Ukraine, you should go from the west of Ukraine. And, uh, um, and in 2004, it was a clear uh, split in the Ukrainian society, and there was op op open support to Yanukovych from Putin, from Moscow, as you know, in, 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 the, later in, in the latest presidential elections. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to admit that Yushchenko rule was not very productive, so that's the... Uh, and they could do much better. Uh, one of the things, for instance, you know, that's, it's, it's even if you even if forget about all the failures, so of, of economic failures, which some of them probably were doomed, uh, the fact is that Yushchenko didn't support Timoshenko at the elections, that's, that's not a very encouraging uh, news. And unfortunately, it happens not only not only in, in, in Ukraine. I mean, we could see something similar in Peru, where three pro-Western candidates, you know, eventually ended up losing elections to 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 ultra right wing and ultra left wing. So I, I think it happens, and it, by the way, it shows that there, there, there is really some kind of democracy there. So where people, you know, are making this the alliances and coalitions, and so sometimes maybe the very wise moves. Um, from what I saw, that Yanukovych, yeah, he. He is not the man who, um, who is, I would say, he's not addicted to democracy, but uh, he wants to be a ruler of Ukraine. And uh, it's very clear that all Putin's attempt to subdue Yukonish failed. So uh, for Yanukovych, the only way to stay in power and for oligarchs who are behind him is actually to, uh, to move west. Not that they do it, you know, wholeheartedly, but I think it's, this is a forced move. And, uh, if there were some illusions in the beginning, you know, Moscow, I think they don't disappear. I don't think that Ukraine will will accept any any dictate from Moscow, whether it's Yanukovych or whoever is in power. It's a bit of a different topic, actually. Um, but I was wondering, what are your views on the recent reports that Michael Dufal will be nominated for the next uh, ambassador of Russia? Look, uh, it's it's quite you know an unusual decision by the standards of of the State Department and the White House. I think it's. The only non-career diplomat in the last 30 years, uh, um, except uh, uh, Strauss, um, definitely knows Russia well. So uh, I can only guess uh, whether he'll have liberty to to uh, do anything or will follow instructions. And uh, in my view, this, the um, the latter is more likely. So uh, new position there from the means that they will carry uh, is the reset policy. Uh, and um, I, frankly speaking, I don't expect that much will happen. So it's the, I know him much better than Ambassador Byerly, but uh, that's all I can all I can say about the changes in in, in uh, um, uh, U, uh, U.S. embassy embassy Moscow. I believe, and again, I might be wrong because I don't know all the intricate details, you know, between the State, the White House, and the White House vis-à-vis uh, -vis this NSC, this 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 nomination. But I believe the policy will be still made here in Washington, and uh, he might be a very good man to carry these policies. Uh, uh, he had some good ideas about Russia, but also lately his certain views were harshly criticized by Russian opposition because we believe that it's, uh, you know, the, the, as, as I described, the U.S. policy today is not, is not uh, very productive considering the interest of long-term interest of Russian of Russian democracy. But one thing is undeniable. He's a great expert, maybe one of the best in this country, on Russia, and it always helps. The Kremlin expressed great satisfaction with the nomination of my fall as ambassador. Yeah. He was instrumental in, 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 in starting this new policy, so that's but again, I don't, I don't expect much. So it's, it's, it's not about ambassador. It's about the president. It's about official policy.
and I don't see any, any sign of this policy being changed, unless the House uh, and, and the Senate uh, create uh, uh, problems for this uh, peaceful reconciliation between uh, America's White House and the Putin's White House in Moscow. Okay, we'll move. This is more in terms of uh, foreign diplomacy. Um, recently, Kristen uh, Ilya uh, is the head of the World Chess Federation. Uh, he was in Iraq and uh, part of a uh, Russian envoy to uh, convince him to step down. Uh, and the first, you know, the first part of, this, of your question was a fact. Yes. The second <laughs> is the a speculation. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to. Oh, again, it's not me speaking. You, you hear Mikhail Margel, who is an official envoy, and you publicly denounced Ivan for being an individual who was looking for some some publicity. Now, I can tell you that maybe for living people, it's a good sign. Because Ilyam Zhirinov is known for his friendship with dictators, and he once visited Saddam Hussein, and it was in March 2003. <laughs> <laughs> so following the same pattern, we may expect that you know the the, the Gaddafi, the Gaddafi would disappear uh, fairly soon. But I wouldn't make I wouldn't make any any any, any official story out of that. And also, I think today we saw Mikhail Margella visiting Tripoli with official visit. Now, whether he, whether Russia is still willing Gaddafi to step down, we don't know. So we saw today also the public statement from Medvedev, Greek Putin, and, uh, and a Chinese leader uh, actually demanding NATO to cease the operation in Libya. So I, I'm not sure, you know, what, the, what is the real Russian position uh, uh, behind, uh, behind closed doors. Uh, remains to be seen, but uh, I, 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 I'm a great believer that the removal of any dictator you know, at uh, any cost, is always good for, for people who live under this oppression. I believe you were quoting the papers saying the meeting was between two crazy people. Right? <laughs> was that an accurate quote? No, I don't think I... So I, I didn't make any comments. Yes, they, they, they... No, they are actually crazy. I mean, we heard Gaddafi now, but Mr. Lujinov was on the record uh, saying many times last year that he met aliens. So maybe just, you know, for aliens... Maybe I had a message from the aliens. <laughs> uh, kind of a multi-level question. Uh, with Putin being supported by most of the monopolies within the country, including all the construction companies, all the oil companies, and not being strongly opposed from the common people, uh, and you're calling for U.S. action, would it kind of make the U.S. look like a bad guy coming into Russia, taking over Putin's position? Wouldn't be supported by most of the elites and not opposed by some of the commoners? And again, is uh, and another part of this question is Russia and and the Chinese are do they have a blossoming relationship and if so would it be wise for the United States to come in and uh, uh, kind of take action against Russia when China owes a lot of our debt and also um, with the New Start Treaty just being signed with that be as well you know since. Russia is another country. And if if the United States does need to take action, what do you think we should do? How do you think we should uh, approach the situation without all of these things coming around the bias? <laughs> oh, all legitimate concerns, you know. <laughs> I think many people are lucky, are lucky that in 1948, Harry Truman had the same concerns. When he uh, stopped Stalin's attempts to seize, uh, to close down West Berlin, and when he saved people of, of, of Taiwan and South Korea, at that time they were facing Stalin's Soviet Union, uh, with the most massive army in the world. And uh, okay, it's following up in, in history. So I think uh, you know, Ronald Reagan faced uh, the Soviet Union with uh, his nuclear force, and. Um, you know, when he did his, he made his statements and when he acted, I think it's just, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was an act of courage. Uh, and today you have concerns about China having American debt. <laughs> and do you think China is going to lose debt? Chinese economy will, will be blown up next day if America stops buying. So it's, it's like you're in the same boat. So it's, uh, yes, you depend on them, they depend on you. So it's an export-oriented economy. 
If America, if America goes bust and American consumers, you know, go bankrupt, China will blow up, and that's you know, up to the moon. So they know that. So that's why I, again, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't show the weakness because communists and dictators, they feel that enemies. They recognize the, the weakness immediately. So that when they smell it, you're looking for trouble. That's what happened when Khrushchev met Kennedy. He saw, he saw the young and experienced president. It ended up as a Caribbean crisis. God forbid Kennedy was strong enough at the last moment to stop the wars. So uh, today, yes, the, the, the bad guys are pretty strong, but they are not all powerful, and they're more vulnerable. Uh, you mentioned Star Treaty. I just I don't understand the uh, the consequences of the Star Treaty for any U.S. action. So the, uh, this Star Treaty was ratified in U.S. Congress uh, after a letter of President Obama, where he uh, promised that Russia would not have any veto rights over U.S. missile defense system. I don't know who translated to President Obama the official statements of Russian officials, but the next day after ratification of the Senate, both Minister Lavrov and, and Konstantin Kosachev, the head of the foreign relations between the Russian parliament, went on the record saying that Russia had a totally different view of this document, and it believed that Russia, they, they said that Russia had all rights to veto any development of missile defense systems. That's why when now you can see Russia opposing it, you can't blame Putin. This is one, you know, let's give him credit. I mean, he never said otherwise. So from the very beginning, you know, Russia, Russian position was, was, was consistent. This, uh, the START Treaty was about Russia's ability to interfere with any missile defense initiative uh, uh, um, sponsored by the United States. So if the United States Senate you know, took Obama's word and, and didn't look at the official statements, Official statements by top Russian diplomats. That's your problem. So that's why again, I don't see any. I don't see any uh, consequences of America acting decisively. And as for blossoming relations between uh, Russia and China, yeah, you can have blossoming relations between the predator and the prey. China has not been hiding its intentions to, to swallow most of Russian territories. You look at the Chinese maps. You know, most of Russian territory in the Far East, East Siberia, and, and even West Siberia, are shown as temporarily occupied. <laughs> you know, uh, when, during some of my trips, you know, in, 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 in Russian uh, East Siberian Far East, we had a jail, for instance, in the Kutsk. The Chinese are crossing our border in small groups, 100,000 each. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, China, China is playing its cards, you know, it's, 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 it's wise, it, it knows it can be uh, slow because of its mass and demographics. And one of the jokes in Russia is why we are doomed against China is because Chinese leaders think in centuries and Russians in dollars. <laughs> so uh, China is a big threat to Russia. And by the way, if you look at the map and if you look at the geopolitical challenges my country is, has been facing, you understand that the only threat to territorial integrity to, to Russia comes not from the West, uh, not from America or Western Europe, but from China, and also from radical Islam. So uh, we didn't talk today, and just you know, because we, it's, it was probably would be some kind of uh, deviation from the main topic, but we didn't talk about North Caucasus. You know, it's much more than Afghanistan because it's it's, it's Europe. You know, if you look at the map, it's, it's, it's Europe, and you have. Terrorism, you have people get, uh, get killed every day, and you have guys like Kadyrov, Ramzan Kadyrov, who runs Chechnya, uh, still on the payroll of, of, of Putin, and his emissaries can kill people anywhere, in Moscow or in Vienna, uh, because they, they carry official Russian documents, the documents of Russian uh, uh, intelligence. So uh, uh, we, we, we have to look you know, in, in, in opposite direction for, for, for real threats, and I think that any American action against fat cats, against oligarchs, against all the dairy pastas of this world, I don't think they will have any negative response from Russian people. The, the problem is when the Putin regime can present that America is, is, is trying to hurt that, the whole country. But that's why I think that replacing Jackson then with some meaningful sanctions against individuals could be a demonstration of the goodwill of America, because Jackson then technically hurts the whole country. The, the, the uh, sanctions will hurt few corrupt individuals. And no one in Russia, uh, no one who can you know, read and uh, follow uh, 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 political news, no one would blame America for, for beating up Surkov or uh, 
Churo, the Royaki Menka, the head of the Putin Jugend. Oh, by the way, just you know, talking about also this, just mentioned this name, uh, Nash, this is what we call Nash Putin Jugend. Uh, they have a regular summer camp on, on Lake of Selina. And funny enough, you know, you could see that this summer camp has been regularly supported by some of the prominent Western corporation, corporations. For instance, this year, one of the title sponsors is Cisco. 